Hi guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, I wanna talk about the importance of potassium with preserving muscle mass and reducing body fat, okay? Here's the facts. Every gram of protein needs 2.6 mill milliequivalents of potassium. That means without enough potassium, you can't hold protein or amino acids in your body. And that's one of the reasons why people get atrophy, especially being a diabetic. Diabetics have insulin resistance. And when you have insulin resistance, you cannot absorb potassium very much anymore. So there, bar, there goes your muscle protein, there goes the amino acids. So potassium is a very important mineral in preserving the muscle mass and the density and preventing atrophy. But also each glucose molecule needs one potassium ion. Now, we've been talking about in other videos about reducing glucose, but we do need some storage of glucose in a form called glycogen to help you uh, quick energy between meals and things like that. But you're not gonna get it from eating sugar. You're gonna get it just from eating any food. Your body will convert enough glycogen to storage if you need it. And a certain portion of the brain runs on glucose despite how many ketones you use. But your body's making it, the liver's making it. But you need potassium to store this sugar as glycogen. Glycogen is stored sugar. If you don't have enough potassium, guess what? You're not going to store the sugar. And guess what you're going to store? More body fat. So potassium actually helps people lose weight and re preserves your muscle. All right, I just wanted to bring up this point. Um, and the other point is that you need a lot of potassium. You probably already know this, but you need about 4,700. And that's not even a stressed out body. If, you have, if you're stressed and you have rheumatoid arthritis and you have a lot of other body problems and you're diabetic, you probably need five to 6,000 milligrams. So. Try to get it from vegetables. You can enhance it from potassium citrate and other minerals, but uh, you need about seven to 10 cups of vegetables to get at least 4,000 milligrams of potassium every single day. All right, go ahead and do that and put your comments below. Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about low potassium. Why? Because potassium is probably the number one deficiency with most people, but it's the hardest to detect because when you take a blood test, most of the potassium, 98% of your potassium is inside the cell, not outside the cell. So when they do a blood test, it's not gonna show up unless it's really, really, really extreme. So the type of test that you would have to do would be an intracellular test. It's very sophisticated. People don't really ask for it. Doctors probably don't even know about it, but there is a test that you can do. But I like to go by symptoms. Uh, here are some of the symptoms of low potassium. And by the way, this is not vitamin K, but this is a, a chemical symbol of potassium. It's a K plus. So when you're low potassium, uh, the blood pressure will increase. Why? Because potassium is a physiological relaxer. It's a tranquilizer. It calms things down. Uh, muscle cramps because potassium is an electrolyte. Sugar cravings. Why? Because potassium helps you store sugar and it will actually help you get rid of sugar cravings um, because the storage of, of glucose uh, needs potassium. Okay, constipation. Yeah, so that's another symptom of low potassium. And then high insulin. So there's a relationship between sugar, blood sugars, diabetes, and potassium. In fact, when you have enough potassium, the need for insulin goes down. So I always recommend potassium for uh, diabetic clients. Remember, this is another one, muscle weakness. You could have this unexplainable muscle weakness and not know why. Why? Because the, the electrolytes are needed to help the muscles contract. And that's why you have an abnormal heartbeat because the heart is a muscle. Same thing with this muscle, same thing with that muscle. So these abnormal uh, heartbeats, uh, for example, like at, um, atrial fibrillation, arrhythmias, uh, that's a combination of deficiency of potassium and or magnesium. Okay, anxiety and sleeping problems because potassium is something to calm you down. So if you're doing um, something that doesn't involve a lot of, like some diet that doesn't involve enough potassium, you can start manifesting a lot of these symptoms. Now, let's just go into what causes low potassium. Well, if you are sick and you vomit, or let's say you're a bulimic, that can cause that. Or maybe you're just not eating enough in your diet. <clears throat> um, now you might say, well, I eat bananas, right? Well, bananas only have 300 milligrams. 
you need 4,700 milligrams per day to hit your, um, your regular amount that you need. So you would have to consume, I don't know, 12 bananas, 11 bananas. So we don't want all that sugar. So what we want to do is we want to consume our potassium from vegetables, from salad. And you're going to need about 7 to 10 cups. Okay, If you watch my other videos, I talk about that. It's not that hard. You just have a couple big salads. If you don't like salad, take kale, maybe a little bit of berry, blend it with water, and drink your salad. Okay, That'll get the potassium in there. So we want to start to increase that. And that's how we increase it from the diet. You're going to feel a lot better too. Because if you're doing like a Atkins diet, high protein, uh, you're, you're going to definitely need potassium. You're going to start feeling weakness uh, because uh, you don't have enough potassium. Okay, so ketosis is the state of fat burning when you're eating uh, more fat, no carbs, and you could become deficient in potassium from that too. So that's why I always modify the ketosis diet, and I make sure that we have enough greens and vegetables to help balance that. And also potassium is necessary for the digestion and breakdown and buildup of protein. So people that are losing their hair, for example, and they're eating just protein, thinking that they're going to get their hair back without potassium, sorry, it doesn't work. So we got diuretics. Say so you're on a blood pressure medication. Well, you're going to deplete your potassium and keep the blood pressure there. Interesting. That's the diuretic. So that's one of the side effects. So you better make sure that your diuretic is not pulling out potassium and you're not putting it back in. Okay, high cortisol, that's stress. Stress can also deplete potassium. In fact, I've had people do um, advanced testing on their potassium levels, and they are eating a tremendous amount of potassium, but because they're under a tremendous amount of stress, their potassium stays low because with the adrenal, it's almost like you have a hole in the bucket and the potassium goes right through. So. Again, when you're under stress, you need even more potassium. So anyway, this potassium is really important. Uh, I'm, I forgot one. It's also high insulin will cause a low potassium, and that's sugar. So let's just add that to the list. Consuming sugar will deplete your potassium. And you can even feel it in your heartbeat. Just go, It starts to go boom, 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 fast. You, a strong heartbeat, you can hear it in your inner ear, that is a sign of low potassium because you just ate a lot of sugar and uh, you need to start consuming more salad to put that back. So um, and the last one is drinking too much water. So this goes against what everyone says that you have to drink when you're, you know, you, by the time you drink it's too late because you're, you don't know when you're thirsty and that's just the myth. When you drink too much water, you create a condition called um, hypotremia, which is a dilution of all your electrolytes and then your heart starts get going out of balance and you can have a heart attack by drinking too much water. So you want to drink when you're thirsty so you don't flush out all your electrolytes because you're drinking water but you're peeing out electrolytes. You're not putting in electrolytes. I like to hydrate my water with lemon, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, maybe a little stevia if it's carbonated. I drink Pellegrino a lot um, or I drink filtered water. So I just want to kind of give you an overview uh, on this very common deficiency that people have and the symptoms. So you can start thinking with it. And if you start having any of these, then you know it could be connected with that. And then you know the cause of that. Okay? So I hope that helped. I will see you in the next video.